Hi, we're at Midway Village today. We're filming the Great War, World War I. This is the inaugural event here. The museum staff has been very positive. Um, I hope that this is the start of a long, long occasion. They've built trenches. Good morning. My name's Heller Armbruster. We're here at Rockford Midway Village at the first annual Great War event at Midway Village. Next year will be the centennial of the Great War, 2014. It'll be 100 years since the Great War began. What we're doing here uh, is telling the story of the Great War, different armies and nations that were involved. Uh, we've recreated a trench here on the battleground, which will be a permanent exhibit to help tell the story of how soldiers fought and lived in trenches on the Great War and the horrors they endured uh, during that time period. Uh, the event goes for two days, Saturday and Sunday. Uh, there will be living historians throughout the town telling stories of things that were going on in the world, uh, different nations involved, and uh, we span the entire history from the beginning of the war in 1914 with the uniforms and equipment and the battles look like to what they look like towards uh, 1918, towards the end of the war. So welcome to Midway Village. This will be an annual event. We're proud to tell this history here and uh, excited to be the largest public World War I event in the country. John J. Pershing, who was commander of the American Expeditionary Forces in Europe during the Great War, born in La Cleve, Missouri in September 1860. In 1905, he was promoted from captain to general, with over 826 other officers and men. End of the Great War, September of 1919, he was promoted to General of the Armies, which is the equivalent to a six-star general. Good morning and welcome to the first World War I Great War event at Midway Village first annual event. And I'd like to thank everybody for traveling all the distances and coming here safely and uh, bearing with the weather with us. This is, uh, this is very realistic. But thank you for coming and being part of this. Our mission here is to make this event the largest public World War I event in the country. And today, thank you for coming to participate in this. Next year is a centennial. And uh, we want to be on the forefront of the centennial ceremony. Morning, sir. Morning. Morning. Everybody have a nice, uh, dry, warm place to sleep last night? Outstanding. Uh, 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 okay. <laughs> well, I want to just uh, personally say thank you uh, for coming out to Midway Village uh, Museum on this uh, beautiful weekend uh, to inaugurate our uh, first World War I event. Uh, today, out at uh, Midway Village in Rockford, Illinois, we have brought uh, part of our 1918 Marine Corps trench display that uh, we've built. And <clears throat> one of the key parts of this display is that it is an above ground cutaway designed to bring the trench out of the ground onto the eye level of the uh, attending public so they can see all the intricate details of how a trench was constructed how a Marine or just a soldier in general would have lived in one, and what amenities or comforts they had available to them at the time. Yeah, this is the firing line. This is where all the soldiers would step up to shoot over the wall or to hop over the wall. Uh, sometimes they'd use a ladder to get up over the wall. Basically, straight on out above these, past these sandbags would be what was known as no man's land. Uh, 300, 400 yards across from our trench would be the German trenches. Um, these trenches were very narrow, out 
in the elements. You're out in the elements all day. All day, all night. Just waiting for that whistle to blow to go over the wall in the no man's land. All the GI issued equipment that they were issued, um, the backpack with their fanny pack and their meat can holder, their shovel, a gas mask, a shelter half with their diaper, their leggings, that your putties, your meat can with your salt and pepper shaker, you got a uniform. You got over here a guy that was over in France. This is his personal footlocker with his jackets, his pants, his two winter and um, garrison cap with his winter cap, his original sweater. I got letters from his home, his shirt, his scarf, and hanger, his dog tags. Then all the different items that uh, GI would use plus with the uh, German and, and British items over there.
keep waiting. When do we want it? Equal pay. What do you want? When do we want it? Now! What do we want? When do we want it? Now!